Well, in today's lecture, we're going to talk about Napoleon as emperor. It was on December the 2nd of 1804, uh, before a glorious crowd, both inside Notre Dame and out, that Napoleon was crowned as emperor. It happened after an election. After all, you want to have an election to make certain that this is what the people wanted. And uh, the election was uh, phenomenal. In fact, there were over three and a half million votes of yes, crown him our emperor, to a mere 2,570 votes that said no. Uh, this, of course, was probably a rigged election uh, that also had committees of vigilance overseeing the actual results. But still, at this incredible display of glory and pomp, uh, with the Pope present himself to crown Napoleon as emperor, as the Pope began to reach and place the crown upon the head of Napoleon, Napoleon famously grabbed it out of his hands and placed it upon himself, and then crowned his wife Josephine as empress. Yes, he would ally with the church, but only so far as it was convenient. He was not ultimately to have any gods or masters himself. He also allied famously with Tsar Alexander of Russia, himself an enlightened despot who had risen to power after murdering his own father, uh, the Tsar Paul of Russia. Uh, together they found themselves to be almost like two peas in a pod, and they planned to actually divide all of Europe um, amongst themselves, with Napoleon ruling the western half and with Tsar Alexander ruling the eastern half, very much like a modern-day Roman Empire, but bigger. He also began to install uh, various uh, members of his family as the rulers of different states around Europe. All of these states would be satellite states, meaning they would be at least officially separate and independent, but they would be realistically under the control of Napoleon himself. The problem, of course, with this is his family was dysfunctional. Uh, they were not experienced or trained rulers. Uh, they were not disciplined. In fact, his own brother, Louis, uh, was known for flashing his own Belgian people that he ruled over in public whenever he gave a speech. Uh, that was kind of some of the character that we're actually dealing with here. Anyway, uh, all of this led to renewed war. In fact, um, uh, the British, who would be the consistent opponents of Napoleon, had a lot to say about him. In fact, for one, they called him bony, showing you their actual um, sense of humor and their sense of humor really in the, uh, in the light and in the face of incredible evil and opposition. Uh, but still, they, they able, were able to resist him. And it was the Duke of Wellington, for example, who commented uh, that Napoleon was never able to fight a defensive campaign or a battle. He said that he could only ever attack, and that was his greatest weakness, something that, that Wellington would exploit when he fought Napoleon's forces throughout Spain and Portugal, and especially when he fought Napoleon himself at the Battle of Waterloo. 